Are you a physical therapist or a healthcare practitioner and you are wanting to work with patients out of your home or out of your garage? It might not be as difficult as you think. In this video today, I'm going to talk with you about the different things that I've experienced working out of my garage as a physical therapist and some suggestions that I have, as well as take you on a tour of my new and updated version of our garage gym. The first question that I get a lot from other therapists or practitioners about working out of a garage is how do I know if I can? My my first response to that is always to check with your city or your local government. I went to my city hall in the city where I live and I spoke with the business department and told them about what my business was, what my plans were um, as far as being a physical therapy practice and wanting to work with clients out of my garage. And all I had to do was fill out an extra form. And I think pay like an extra $30 or something for the city business license. And it was just marked as a home-based business. And they said I was good to go. That is probably not always going to be the case depending on where you live. So I 100% recommend it checking with your city your town, your county, wherever you're living to see what the regulations and the rules and the laws are and if there's anything in particular that you need to do. I also, I'm operating operating out of my garage gym. So we, my husband and I own our home and you might also need to check with your homeowner's insurance to see what they have to say about it. What is going to happen either way, of course, is going to depend on the insurance and probably again where you're living. And you could also check with your liability insurance for your business and just let them know this is what I'm planning. Do I need anything else? Or do you guys need anything else from me? Is there going to be any change in the policy? And that way that will help you kind of make a decision as to whether you want to continue forward in doing this. Another option that I did want to bring up because I had done this a few times before we moved into our house is actually working with clients out of our apartment complexes gym. This may or may not be like a possibility depending on where you live, but if you are in an apartment complex and they have a gym, you might be able to start seeing clients there. I was actually really pleasantly surprised when I had started my practice. We were in this apartment complex and I went to the management and asked if I would be able to work with clients in the gym. And they said, absolutely. Both the like open gym with all of the equipment and then they had a like private treatment room where they said like a lot of times like massage therapists would rent it out and there was no charge to use the room you just had to reserve it uh, online in the app um so if you are in any kind of residence where you have access to a gym whether it's apartments or a home those are like a few of the things to think about so it is not actually as difficult as you might think it might be i know when i i work with a a lot of uh, therapists, other clinicians were always really worried about <laughs> following all of the rules and making sure that like everything possible is covered. But I will tell you specifically with this instance, it's not as complicated as, as you might think. So definitely check with the city, town, the county, and wherever you are currently living, as well as with any insurance policies that you might have to double check that they're good with all of it. See if there's anything else that you might need or need to change and you should be good to go. One question that I did get on, I think it was the last video that I made about uh, Garage Gym, which you can, if you want to compare and contrast, <laughs> you can find uh, on my channel. The other video that I did was like a Garage Gym tour or tiny clinic <laughs> tour. And one of the comments that I got there was, what are my thoughts with regards to privacy with my address for the business? Just worrying about that. So I will say that like now the address of my my business on my Google business profile is a service area. They, I think they added that as a location option since I made my practice. So I updated it from my home address to just like my city as a service area. So my address is not overtly like public when somebody looks up my business. My, my thoughts on it is that if somebody really wanted to find my address, they could whether it's on like my Google business profile or on my website or not. I have enough of a digital footprint where if somebody wanted my address, they 
would be able to find it. To me, practicing out of my home, the pros like far outweigh the cons. I, I definitely live in like a really safe neighborhood and everything. So I don't really have any huge concerns about that. But if you are somebody that does and you really want to keep that address information completely private, then it might make it a little bit tougher to like advertise and market for clients um, to see them out of your home. But I'm sure they're, they're ways that you can kind of get around that but like I said if somebody really wanted your address they could find it so I think it's more of a matter of like is the desire to work out of your home and see patients in your crash gym or out of your apartment complex is that desire like does it outweigh your worries about the privacy aspect. Either is totally valid, but just like something to to consider. Completely personal preference. It's worked out okay so far for me, doing this now for four, four plus years, but everybody's gonna have a different experience. And then the next thing is, what do I need in order to work with clients in my garage gym? I sometimes will argue that you don't need anything <laughs> you can at least like as a physical therapist but I, I feel like this probably goes for a lot of healthcare providers you can just have a conversation with somebody and help them a ton. Plus like definitely with PT, there's tons of testing that we can do. There's manual therapy that you can do where you don't really need any equipment at all. So a lot of this is just going to be like nice to have. I would say kind of like some bare bones basics and like I'll show you what I have when we do um, our garage tour is a table. So I did get a table from Amazon uh, Plinth and it's fold up so I can put it in a case and carry it and go somewhere else. I really like that versus like like a standard table, I guess, or a high-low table because you can't really move those very well. So with the fold-up plan, it gives me flexibility to be able to take it and go and see patients wherever I want. I have a tablet that has a keyboard with it. So I use that to do documentation, to go over home exercise programs. I'll use it to pull up images of anatomy and also will use it to draw different diagrams of things that I might need for working with my patients. So I definitely like that. I think having a phone is good as well either with the tablet or the phone. I do a lot of video recording for barbell performance and technique stuff. And that's really helpful to go over the videos with the clients. So that's something that is helpful to my practice. Also a chair. <laughs> I have a spinny wheelie chair. So that is helpful as well. But besides that, I think it's going to depend a lot on what you typically do with your patients. And the way that uh, I actually started building out my garage gym was I had like the basics. <laughs> I had like the table, the electronics, like I just said, and I had dumbbells, maybe like a couple of bands or whatever, super basic stuff. It wasn't anything crazy. And then what I did, my husband and I did over like 2020 and 2021 is like every month or couple months or so we would buy new equipment so that um, we could start to outfit the garage gym with like what we wanted to use which I think is important that all of your equipment double is not only something that you can use with clients and patients but you would want to use yourself because gym equipment is an investment so you want to make sure that it's going to have as much use as possible but we would just get new equipment over time. And I would also get new equipment depending on the client that I was working with. Like if there was something that I really wanted to use with them, I'd finish up our session for the day, like with that thought in my mind, and then go online and find the product that I wanted to use with them at the next session and order it. And then typically it gets to gets to my house and I have it before the next session with the client. You know, don't worry about like, do I have enough equipment to get started or things like that? Because you have your brain <laughs> and that is a good place to start and then you can always go and get new equipment as needed and as your budget allows. So definitely don't feel like you need to wait to like start your practice or start seeing clients until you have like a fully decked out garage gym. You absolutely don't need to get started with what you have and go from there. So next, we'll take some time to go and do a quick tour of the garage gym. I'll take you with me downstairs and show you what I have so you can see if, you know, it's something that you're interested in. And like I said, we can also compare it to previous tours <laughs> um, in the past. So I wanted to take the time to give you an updated tour of our garage gym. We got a sign. 
<laughs> up there as well. So I'm just gonna kind of show you like the different equipment that we have. It is not the cleanest right now, but that's okay. Here we have to start off with, we have our treadmill. My husband works with a lot of runners, so that's been helpful for gait analysis stuff. Here we have my plinth, my table, and my rolly chair. It's just a table that I got on Amazon originally, but it's lasted four years and it's worked out just fine. As you can see, like you can fold it up, which is helpful for transport. That is the air conditioning that we installed. And this is usually where my dog face down so, so there's some of his stuff here and then we have a peloton bike something that i personally got into quite a bit and i also ended up using a lot with the patients that i saw who had hip and knee pain so that came in handy to have a bike in here over here you can see we have a water cooler for clients who come over a fan as well the tv i usually put like music on or i can display like workouts here's my other sign I also have this whiteboard here where I'll uh, write up the workouts for the therapy appointment. There's a big sign. We have a TRX, which of course is helpful. And then here is all of our like weight racks. We got ended up getting like enough uh, bumper plates for like during the pandemic, we could do all of our weightlifting here. And obviously like they've come in handy for the clientele that we work with. So we have tons of weight, tons of dumbbells, a couple of our three kettlebells. We have two different barbells, a 35 and a 45, PVC pipes, jump rope, hip loops, resistance bands, chalk, of course, as you can see. This is a pull-up bar. You can't do like gymnastics on it because it's not like bolted into the ground, but works just fine. And of course it's a squat rack as well. We have a couple of different boxes. I really like having, so we have like our standard box here on the bottom, but then I also have this smaller box and I got this on Amazon. I wanna say it was maybe like $50 or so, I can't remember, but this is super nice for getting people back into doing any kind of step ups, step downs, box jumps, but we just, we need something a little bit smaller. So I really like that versus uh, pads. Right here, that is a fold up weight bench. So that'll come out like for a bench press or anything else we might need a weight bench for. Tricep dip station. My husband just got this back extension station here and I have a rower, so that is helpful. And then there's some additional like padding back there. This is like our waiting area. <laughs> it's just extra chairs that we had from the house, but I have had people <laughs> use it as a waiting area. And then like down here, these are horse stall mats. So at least like a, a few years ago when we got them, um, I haven't checked pricing on anything recently, but these are cheaper than getting like gym mats. So recommend these. They are super heavy, but you can usually get them at like a farm supply store. And then this is a fence to keep my dog inside. So that's pretty much the tour of the garage gym. It's not anything super crazy, but we have like all the equipment that we could need and it's worked out really really well and so now after the tour hopefully that was helpful to see some of the stuff that i have um, that i've used for training and for physical therapy with my clients i wanted to answer some of the questions that i found in a blog post on garagegymexperiment.com about working with clients from your garage because I liked some of the questions and I thought that they might be helpful for you if you are considering working out of your garage. So the first question is, what is the best part of training clients out of your garage? I would say it is so easy and flexible <laughs> and I don't have to go anywhere. So it saves a ton of time. And it's also nice because it's like, it's a smaller space and it is one-on-one -on -one or like I've heard of other, other practice owners might even do like small group training in a garage. It's nice that it's like a little bit, it's like semi-private versus working with clients out of like a big gym, like the big CrossFit gym that I'm working out of right now as well. It can get so loud and so noisy and there's so many people in the big gym but when you're in a garage gym it's just you and a client or you and a couple of people um so that is really nice like I said to make it semi-private and it's definitely quieter and depending on the 
like client that you're working with and what you're trying to do, it might be a better environment to work with them. But it's also, like I said, super convenient for me, <laughs> for you, because like I could be up here in my office working and then I have a client and just go downstairs and start working with them. So those are some of the things that I really like about it, but I'm sure that there are tons of other pros. In this blog post, the, the writer is talking about like what the toughest part is about working out of your garage. And they're talking about how like people have I guess maybe like a certain perception of what it is to work with clients out of your garage or out of your basement or whatever and it might sound kind of weird but at least so far for me I haven't had any issues with it like nobody's been like oh weird like a garage <laughs> and I think like like this author points out when you just kind of own it and say like yeah I, I work with people out of my home out of my garage out of my basement out of my shed whatever it is and you say like you know we get great results it's all all the same stuff it's just like a home-based location you'll be just fine. I don't think anybody will really mind like as long as it's clean. That's something that I do want to point out you need to remember to do is I always like between clients will wipe off all of my equipment and my table and then usually before clients come I sweep the floor to try to make the garage as clean as possible. Cleanliness, good. <laughs> so I think as long as you're doing that, you know, and presenting yourself well, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Oh, the other thing that I did experience, and this is going to depend on where you live and what the climate is like, but where I live um, outside of Las Vegas, it is very hot in the summer. So like when I would see clients later in the afternoon, um, the sun would be shining into the garage and it made it very hot. So like I did have to have fans running and stuff. And, and eventually we ended up installing uh, air conditioning in there. But just something to think about. And as far as like what times to schedule clients, if the weather is going to have an impact on it, it's just something to consider. It doesn't necessarily make it impossible. And most of the people that I work with, you know, like we're used to working out of gyms where it is very hot or it is very cold somewhere in between two but like we're used to working out like with the elements so for my clientele it wasn't that big of a deal but depending on the clients that you are working with they might not take so well to like seeing you when it's 110 degrees <laughs> in your tiny clinic so just something to consider with that as far as what kind of services I offer in the garage gym it's typically for me it's all one-on-one -on -one, and I mainly do a lot of exercise based stuff workouts strength training I've started doing a little bit more manual therapy but that all works out great in the garage I haven't really run into anything yet where it hasn't worked out so that's been totally okay and as far as attracting new clients also not difficult people really will come to see you because of the results that you offer to people and the problems that you solve and it doesn't really matter how it gets done so like being in a garage gym is not going to be like the deciding factor for uh, potential clients to decide to work with you because like as long as they feel comfortable and you are able to offer a solution to their problem they'll come and work with you in your garage it's not it's not going to be as big of a deal as you think it might be so in conclusion if you have a garage gym space available or like an apartment community gym space available you might have everything that you need to start seeing clients in person uh, out of your home. Um, it's one of the possible locations of being a cash-based practice, being like, like home-based in a garage, mobile, going to other people's homes and garages, online, working out of another space. So being home-based has a ton of advantages. And if you have the location available, like we talked about at the beginning of the video, there's only a few things that you really need to do to check in to see like is this like legally possible where I live and it's not super complicated and if you are uh, in a place where you are ready to start your practice and you are looking for step-by-step -step help and a walkthrough on how to get started and how to attract clients to your new garage gym tiny clinic practice I would love to invite you to apply to our DBT to CEO coaching program this is a six-month business coaching program designed to help you learn everything that you need from business and setup to 
sales, selling PT for cash, how to market for physical therapy clients, private clients on your own. And by the end of the program, the whole goal is to help you find your first five to 10 clients on your own as a solo practitioner and learn everything that you need to be successful. So if that is something that is of interest to you, I'd love to invite you to apply for the program. Or if you have questions, I also have free 15 minute consults available on my website and you can find the links to those in the description below. So please let me know if you have any questions uh, or comments on garage gym stuff and working with clients out of your home and I'll see you on the next one.